The photographic industry was the refuge of every would-be painter, every painter too ill-endowed or too lazy to complete his studies. That's a quote from Baudelaire from 1859. He thought photographers were just wannabe painters that couldn't cut it. How dare he? Here's a quote from 2014. Photography is not an art. It is a technology. My iPad can take panoramic views that are gorgeous to look at. Does that make me an artist? No, it just makes my tablet one hell of a device. Welcome to the Picture This Photography Podcast, where we talk about all things photography, and we make new episodes every Wednesday, and it's free as heck. And today we're talking about, is photography art? Because historically, it was a hot debate, and it kind of still is. And I think you'll be surprised at the end of the podcast where you stand on this one, because I think it's a fuzzier line then maybe you realize. First, we need to thank our sponsor, Udemy. Udemy has over 24 million students with access to over 17 million minutes of video. Over 35,000 instructors are teaching 80,000 courses in 50 languages. Right now, you can get 90% off this Udemy course by clicking the link in the description. This course has over 21 hours of video taught by several different instructors with really fantastic examples. They walk you through camera settings, composition, and all the technical stuff, but then they get into specific types of photography like sports photography and portrait photography. It's incredibly deep for only $14.99. On sale for a very limited time, so check out the link in the description. Thanks to Udemy for sponsoring this video. Improve your life through learning. Ooh, learning is fun. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do some learning today because in this hot debate, I kind of want to start it at the beginning because art was traditionally painting and sculpture and sketching uh, and like dancing and things like that. But then the camera's invented and that's a very different thing. It's a machine making an image, not someone using paint. And like Baudelaire, a lot of artists and people are thinking, photography can't be art, it's too literal. You're just taking a thing and you're recording it and you know, it takes no skill, they thought. They didn't think it took any skill at all. They thought it was just some kind of automatic production and some people compared it more to like a loom um, or you know, a weaving device that made textiles. I totally get that. I think most pictures that people make, you would never consider them art. It's just a snap. That does not make you an artist, right? I get their point. They thought no photos were art, so photographers started pictorialism, which was kind of trying to like replicate art with pictures. So they would take pictures, but they would use poor quality optics. Uh, they would employ some tactics like kicking the tripod leg, and that would make the images a little bit soft and mm -hmm. it would make them look more painterly. Um, one of the pioneers was Julia Margaret Cameron, and you can see a picture here if you're listening to the podcast. Uh, it looks a little bit like Rembrandt, like very moody lighting, um, very soft. It actually looks like it could be a black and white painting, and this was very much the pictorialist style, like a soft, uh, non-literal interpretation of a scene that looked more like a painting. And even though people realized, hey, like photographers making this type of photo, you know, they're using composition and lighting and this is very artistic. People were recognizing that, but they were also still kind of saying, mm, maybe it's too technological, maybe it's too literal. So this is what they were fighting against. They wanted to be photographers. They wanted to be taken seriously as artists. So they took their cameras and they, you know, made them less good by shaking them around a little bit, smearing the lenses with something. Yeah, it's like the old timers who just hate whatever the new generation has come up with, right? Like rock and roll is not music. It's the same pattern that we see repeated throughout every genre of anything in human history, right? Yeah, so pictorialism kind of, you know, photography kind of stayed the same for a while until the early 1900s when people were like, can we do modernism? Can we do something different? Can we not be held into this pictorialism box? Um, and photography started being seen as an art. In 1910, Stieglitz had a gallery showing with his photos, and that was the first time that happened. So that was kind of the whole artistic community saying, okay, it's art. He gets a gallery showing. That's in 1910. Um, and even at that very time that that happened for Stieglitz, he said, like, okay, Fine, 
these pictures made it into a gallery, but I should be able to just take pictures that can do what the camera can do, what it can fully do, sharp, clean, crisp representations of what I see, and that should be art. So he hit this huge milestone and still was not satisfied, even though he was a part of pictorialism, he wanted to break away from that. So I think this is a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way, right? If you think that photography cannot be an art, then nobody would try to take artistic pictures. They would just be documenting things. But once he comes along and shows that it can be art, then other people start thinking about this. Like, hey, I don't, I, I, my, I'm physically not a good painter, or I, I'm not strong enough to be a sculptor, but I could express myself using this fairly new medium. I think it's even, I think that's one way of looking at it. And I think it's also just kind of like people wanted to create this way. You know, there are people that could paint that enjoyed photography. And why not? Any way you express yourself, to me, that's art. And to a lot of people, that's art. Uh, so photographers just wanted their medium to be taken seriously. So much so that it caused all sorts of movements, not just modernism, but uh, Group F64. One of the founders was Ansel Adams. So this is around the 1930s. Pictorialism hasn't evolved very much, but more and more photographers are saying, let's break out of it. Let's do something different. We want to be recognized. So Ansel Adams and seven other photographers get together in the Bay Area and they form this group, Group F64, and they write a manifesto and it says, I'll just summarize it, it says, um, we don't have to be into pictorialism to be artists. Photography should have its own right. It should be able to be a realistic interpretation of a scene, and that should be okay. That should be art. And that's what Group F64 was all about. And everyone in it took realistic photos and considered them art. They had their own gallery opening. They did it themselves. And it was their way of, like, I think sticking it to the man a little bit. So that group did many other gallery showings. And some of those original photos from the first gallery opening are being displayed in Australia some Australian, Australian museum and somewhere else, but that was like a historic moment. And let me take a chance to plug another podcast. We did an entire podcast on Ansel Adams, literally the world's most famous landscape photographer. So you should go back yeah. through our old catalog and dig that up because he has a, a fascinating and actually pretty controversial history. Yeah. I mean, he said he was engaged in a battle against a tide of oppressive pictorialism. Like, they felt <laughs> oppressed. They felt kept in a box. They wanted to create, and they didn't want someone telling them what they could or couldn't create, or how, or what it was supposed to look like. So people were accepting photography, but not the way that they were doing it. Sound familiar, guys? Because it's still going on today. So I want to pose the question, what is art in general? Before we ask if photography is art, or if all photography is art, we should know what art is. I think everybody could have their own feeling about this, and we talked about it a lot. Yeah. So we were like, well, not all pictures are art, not all painting is art, right? But there's something more to it. It's kind of the intention of the art. It's one of those things where it's hard to define, but you kind of know it when you see it. Not always, because I've been to modern art museums where I've thought, is that art? What is happening here? And then you read the description and you think, oh, actually, that's they're making a, a big statement. I like that. So I just looked it up, and it was defined as the act of expressing feelings, thoughts, and observations, a diverse range of human activities in creating visual, auditory, and performing artifacts, expressing the author's imagination, conceptual idea, technical skill, and intended for the appreciation of beauty and emotional power. That's a lot. So when I Instagram my breakfast, that's art? Well, I think it could be. I think if you Instagrammed your breakfast every day and it was American breakfast of Tony, suddenly you're making a different statement. It's a collection making a statement about something that's being experienced and it's an expression. So it could be. So you can't simply define art by looking at an individual piece. People take in some image and they have no background to it. They don't know about the artist or the intention of it. You do simply don't have enough information to judge whether that piece is art because there's more to art than that. Yeah, absolutely. And so I see this come up now where I see people say, 
Well, first I think people were saying, digital photography is not the same. Oh, I grew up with film where we had to do this, that, and the other, and we only had you know, X amount of shots and we couldn't spray and pay, right? Aren't there always people trying to limit like what being a photographer is? Same thing happened when we switched from black and white film to color film, yeah. because color film was simply too realistic. Yeah. And then also when this modern era, the internet came along and people were sharing on Facebook and then they were sharing on Instagram and I remember Instagram, even I made jokes about it. It was like, oh yeah, Instagram photographers, am I right? Like they're all doing this, that and the other and that's not photography. Weren't we all just kind of like cranky like Baudelaire, like trying to keep out this new frontier of photography to preserve what we'd already kind of had a foothold in? No, you lost me, Chelsea. You had me when you said these old people didn't think photography was art, but now that you're saying I am wrong, We're, forget I, it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's actually absolutely still the case. Like, it's constantly evolving. Art and, and your life go hand in hand, and our lives and technology go hand in hand. So naturally, technology is going to influence art. And so we're going to see it change, and we're going to see the formats change, and how it's shared, and what it looks like. And I think that that can be challenging and scary, but very, very exciting. And I think that's a part of why art is important. It's about changing and accepting change, and, and that's a reflection of the real world that we're in all the time. And I think true artists are excited for a new medium, for a new format. They mm -hmm. see some new technology come along, and they think, how can I use this to share my message and my vision? Because it is a whole new world of creativity, new skills to develop. I think the most artistic people are the first to latch onto these things and not just continue in their old pattern. Um, I wanted to cite an example of an artist I found who used pictures literally taken by a robot. So Google Street View, they have little robotic cameras on the back of cars or people or mules, and they just walk around the world and it automatically takes pictures. That is definitely not art. It's as far as you, as you can get from art, right? It's just straight documenting, yeah. Yeah, a robot is taking it on a regular basis. Nobody is trying to convey a message with it. But I found a photographer who has limited mobility and they cannot go out and take their own pictures. And so what they do is they comb through Google Street View and just find kind of amazing pieces. And I looked through the photographer's pieces and indeed the shots were pretty remarkable. They're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. They have fantastic composition. There are amazing stories being told. Like this photo of what looks like a street in maybe, it looks South American, maybe Peru. And they've taken one of those uh, above ground pools and they set it up just literally right in the street. It's yeah. blocking about two thirds of the street and they filled it up with water and kids are playing with it. But beyond that, it's got like nice lines and a perfect balance of color and composition. Mm -hmm. Like it's a great photo and it was taken by a robot. The robot was not the artist. The artist did not take a picture, but still this particular photo became art. But see, that's kind of interesting because you can pick up your camera and everything already exists around you. And then as the photographer, it's your job to observe and curate the moment. So you're in just endless moments and you choose one to freeze. And that's exactly what this person's done. They weren't able to physically get out in the world. So they went into the digital world and they observed, and then they froze a moment. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah, and it's really compelling. So if we were to ask the question, are all photographers artists? Well, the robot's a photographer. It's not an artist. I think most photographers are not artists. They are simply documenting. Um, but some photographers, I think, definitely artists. But can documenting be art once the documenting is curated? Yeah, so, I, I mean, that would happen separately. So what if, like, it wasn't the Google camera, it was just a person, and they just went out and shot everything. Let's say they just took a video. They went about five years of their lives taking video, and then they went back and they cut out those moments. Suddenly the documenting becomes art. Yeah, I think even if they didn't have the intention at the time of capture, at if the time of it curating. happens in post, yeah. that's fine. Hmm, interesting. Uh, 
So the debate continues, and I think the main points that I'd want to take away from this is, uh, if you look back in history, you will see the same patterns repeated over and over again. And sometimes that can make it easier to reflect on your own time and your own life. And as we look back in history, we see people who adamantly believe that photography could not be art because it did not exactly mimic the way that they were doing art. Mm -hmm. But they were just close-minded to the evolution of new technology. And if we apply that to ourselves, we see people still saying that as as young people are taking photos with their phones and sharing it on the internet, on Instagram, this can be a medium for art. It's not always art, but it can be. And we should do everything we can to encourage the next generation of artists to use that technology that they have available to share their message yeah. with a worldwide audience. Definitely, they're capturing the world the way that they can and how they see it. I always think it's so sad when people discour like, discourage teenagers from taking pictures with their phones. I've heard people say before, oh yeah, phone photographers, like that's crap. Why? It's really not. It's just their way of expressing. It's their way, it's an easy tool to express what they're, what they're living and what they're seeing. And with our own kid, she takes pictures with her phone all the time. And I have a lot of peers who try to force a camera on their kids because they want them to learn the art of photography. Yeah. But I'm okay if she learns the art of photography on a phone. Like, that counts. It That's does art. count. It does. Let's take a minute to thank our sponsor, Udemy. Udemy has more than 24 million students with access to 17 million minutes of video. We took a look at a Udemy course called the Photography Masterclass, and it is a remarkable value with over 20 hours of video taught by several different instructors going through the technical aspects of photography and the artistic aspects of photography. Everything from your camera settings, your ISO, your aperture, your shutter speed, into portrait photography, street photography, compositions, managing your background. They covered it all in those 21 hours. And they will even answer questions for you. You can write questions and you'll see the actual teachers will get back to answer the questions from the tens of thousands of students. It's a fantastic value. So click the link in the description down below to learn anywhere, anytime with the Udemy app. And thanks to Udemy for sponsoring this video. Improve your life through learning. So what do you think? Comment down below. Uh, have you rejected photos as art before? Have you been a part of it? Or do you feel like, hey, like anyone can be an artist. If they have a camera, they can make art. Tell us your thoughts. Tell us if you think photography is art. And also, don't forget to join us every Wednesday because that's when we put out a new episode of the Picture This Photography podcast. Thanks. <laughs>